Good morning YouTube. So this week's plant of the week is quarter lines. Um, and my husband chose these this week because he was looking out the window behind me here yesterday and he said, well, that um, red fountain, which this one is called, is looking stunning. And um, perhaps you should choose that as plant of the week this week. So I thought, yep, why not? It is looking stunning. So this is just one plant. And if I step back further, you'll see it's a pretty big specimen when you compare it to the other parts of the border. It absolutely loves it in here. It did start its life in a pot beside my front door many years ago. Um, about three years ago, we pulled it out the pot and I split it into several pieces and I dotted them around the garden, but the main bulk of the plant I put in here and it's doing fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Um, there's about 15 different species of quarter line and many of them flower. Some of them got narrow leaves, like this particular one is a narrow leafed one. Some got wider leaves and some got quite wide leaves. Um, so I have um, three different types in my garden at the moment and um, we'll go and have a look at them. First of all, we'll take a closer look at this one. So it's got beautiful sprays of flowers, as you can see. Um, they don't have much of a scent, actually, but they do, you know, they are rather pretty, very delicate looking. Let's go in a bit closer so you can see them. Sort of like got greeny tinges on them. But actually, now I'm slightly closer, it does have a scent. It does have a mild perfume on it, so um, not at all unpleasant, so... It's uh, rather nice. So I'm really proud of this specimen and um, we'll go and have a look at the other quarter lines that I have in the garden. So the first one I showed you, Red Fountain, is what I call like a bushy quarter line. And this one is like where it produces a trunk, if you like. So as, as the plant grows up, um, the bottom leaves tend to die back and you just pull them off. And it makes this sort of trunk which gets bigger and bigger. And then this just grows up taller and taller. Unfortunately, I don't know the name of this one. I didn't have it when I put it in. Um, but I can tell you this has been in, this is year three now. And it started off down, you know, down low. It didn't have a trunk on it at all. So, um, yes, it is coming away nicely here now. And it's got rather nice stripy leaves, as you can see ready pinky stripy leaves. Now you mustn't confuse these with the flax. Um, I'll just lift the camera up and you'll see that is a massive <laughs> humongous flax. These are not the same species at all so um, they're, they're quarter lines. Like I say there's 15 different ones, roughly 15 species. So I'll show you another one now that I've got in the garden because I have three of them all together. So the third one I have in my garden is this humongous thing here. Um, as you can see, this one's really developed, like that little one I just showed you. The trunk goes all the way up and the leaf is at the top. It also flowers, so you could probably see up here is a big, sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm pointing it and put my finger in the right direction, but you'll see that it's got a big display of flowers coming on it. And I can tell you, these flowers smell absolutely gorgeous. You can smell them over the entire garden when they come out and um, they look really cool and smell really cool. Um, this particular plant in New Zealand, um, the locals call it a cabbage tree. I have no idea why they call it a cabbage tree. It does not resemble a cabbage in any way, shape or form as far as I'm concerned. But I do know in the part of England that I came from, um, they refer to it as a tall bay palm. So I suppose it is a bit like a palm tree. And they did grow a lot of them around Torquay, Paynton and Tall Bay areas. So perhaps it was just a local name. But they do, you know, these are several years old. These are in the garden when I um, when I moved in. They are probably up or upwards of 10 years old, maybe more. So, but they do get quite tall. So if you've got 
a small garden I wouldn't recommend these um, they do get big um, but you could probably get one of the first ones I showed you the red fountain because that just stays low to the ground and it just gets sort of like girth if you like it just gets bigger and bigger you can lift it you can split it so it'll be much more manageable in a small garden okay so that's it for this week thank you for watching please like or dislike and subscribe and I'll catch you later Bye for now.